All right, Ron, I should be recording and
Uh, first one today was our webmaster, Chuck. Uh, he was doing a little bit of uh, work on a, a vintage uh, uh, brass diesel. You want to say anything about it, Chuck? Yep. Yep. That was, that was, that was the stock you got from the short short lines? Oh, perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah they did. They were slow for a while with orders. It was so it was it was good. Yep. Yep. Good. That's good, good to know. Yeah. yeah, that is a very common uh, thing you find with even, even modern, modern locomotives now. I hope Hawkman went through a hell of a run there, there with uh, uh, tractor or uh, delivery uh, gears in my drivetrain. So it's a common occurrence. Uh, everybody, don't forget about the Discord uh, exchange. It's a great place to go on. It's not like, like social media. As far as Facebook, there's no all things on that side or that on. It's just, just a, you know, I'm coming away. And there, there's a channel there where any topic that you might be interested in, like a layout building, grab rattle building, you can get in all that sort of stuff. If you have questions, it's a great, great resource to go out around there, and they'll pull it back quick for your neck. Um, um, there is a new build mode. You can do live chat on there. There's some meeting rooms. Um, some of the divisions have started using that platform to actually host their meetings um, live to their membership, especially out in the Midwest where you get a lot of large um, area division. Division. Driving is a divisions. Driving is a pain in the butt. Uh, Coupler magazine. Uh, Coupler magazine. The couple will stay as a paper magazine if you get it that way. That's the latest from the board of directors. Um, there was some talk about going only to a PDF version. The problem that we have right now uh, with the region is that uh, National is no longer collecting the money for the paper version of the couple. So if you're getting it that way, um, hopefully within the next month, uh, NER will have its own merchant site on their website and will be able to buy the coupler that way. That being said, you automatically get the coupler in the free PDF version. You should be getting that in your emails every day. If you're not getting it, or every um, other month. If you're not getting that, please um, check your spam folders. Nutmeg Division. We got a lot of positive feedback. We're going to do the next uh, uh, division label. These are going to be Acura cars. These are going to be Acura cars. You're going to go for $25 a piece. We just day. signed the contract the other day. Um, open to have them by the December meeting. So, um, so um, you can either pre order and then show them there, them there the, with the uh, link or, uh, or uh, come to the December meeting. And hopefully, we'll have them here. Uh, we use payment, uh, PayPal through the Nominic Division site if you want to pay that way. You can still pay with checks. Or we'll take a cash at a, sh at a, a meeting here. Um, so we're going to try to run through a run of, I think, 48 of these cars for the first go around. And the big train show is coming up. Springfield. Right? Oh, no. Not that one. Not that. <laughs> hey, man, which one is it? Oh, that's Vernon. Excuse me. I'll take that back. Vernon, we will also, Omega will also have a table at the Vernon show. show. So again, so again doing recruiting, getting, getting involved in knowing, knowing what's going on in the big division. That's another good show right now. Cheshire's officially defunct, I believe. No, no, no. Is it back now? Okay. Well, I got, I got nervous then. The last I heard, they voted against not having it again. And that was probably, that was probably at least four or five months ago for me. So. All right. All right. November 25th. They haven't put a lot of information out on that then. Uh, well, well and anybody at Eastern Science State, they, they had a train collector show going on out there. Number three. Now the big, uh, now the big train show. January, January, you can get your tickets now. They're on sale on the website. For the day. For the day. Should, or the two days. It should be a good time. Uh, uh, make division will not have a summer booth this year. We're just going to be in the NER. Um, um, that's our, um, our, um, with national basically it's just going to be one NMRA booth now so already will be there they're, they're, they've been doing the uh, board of directors meetings for national at Springfield so the board of directors are there is there something I think that NMRA should be doing to make your membership better you got the, the top ears there you can make your voices heard at the booth there 
And we, and we will have volunteers at the booth. No, very good. No, brag away. That's what this is all about. <laughs> uh, another event that's coming up is uh, the Kids on Track, on Track Retreat, which is um, the uh, Connecticut DOT. Um, they're doing a rail rail event. Um, they're going to run a special train um, apart from the Springfield at back. And uh, they're doing it like uh, a trick or treat thing so the kids can encourage you to go in the hospital and everything. Ron, you're no. at that event? No, you're not going to be at that event now? Yeah. And it's from Springfield to Hartford. Yeah, yeah. Springfield, Springfield to Hartford and then back to Springfield is the way it goes. There is a box. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice if they did that. Yes. 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 Yep. Yep. At least, At least make it so then it's four-way. So, so then it's, you know, go up, have the first one back to Hartford, and then back up to Springfield. Back down, and, back down and everybody can get where they're going. But again, if you have grandkids, time, if you have grandkids and, you wanna, and you want to get some trains, you can start trading at the same time. It's a good thing to do. All right, all right. I got, I got hit with uh, three members when I put out the call for uh, showcase for the month. I got Chuck, I got James. James is also doing it. I'll put three viewers for another meeting. Uh, but then Steve also uh, piped in, and uh, he offered to do a and uh, he offered to do a mini clinic. So in between James and my full blown clinics, he's going to do like five minutes on how he took. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of these are uh, intermountain cars and made it perfectly correct. correct. I'll, lead I'll lead off the clinic today. today. I'm going to be doing the, the airline branch of the Providence and Worcester. Um, um, build a shadow box style. So I'll talk all about that and what I did here. As I get uh, going on that, that's designed to go to shows and be a public display layout, switching layout. And, and then, then James is going to be do, doing spotting uh, orders, routing cards, and spotting. Uh, operated on I uh, operated on James's layout. And don't forget, don't forget, to, mention forget to mention the train descriptions. I bothered to read that. Yeah. 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 All right. We have three layouts for a tour after the meeting today, that afternoon. Uh, first one is Kevin Ball, who's a good friend of mine because he's another narrow gauger. He's doing the Colorado and Southern. Uh, it's actually a three-gauge layout. There's a primary layout. is uh, HON3, Colorado and Southern branch. So he has a inner gauge section down in Leadville that's uh, basically a, a constant run section. And then uh, he also has some OM30 uh, Gilpin tramway. Trackage on his line, and he's that's really trying to build a little Owen 30 J Gilpin J. And I can tell you the thing is about big. It is, it is, it is tiny. But uh, yeah, one of our other friends, uh, George uh, Sebastian Coleman, uh, 3D printed the superstructure for the little shake. Second one is Rob Smith's Rutland Railroad. And the last one is. Mike Lindman, CSX, Port Elizabeth branch. So a uh, wide variety of genres and eras for the layout tours today, so it should be good all together. And that's there. So I will take one second and I will get my clinic up and we'll jump right into the clinics. Yes. Geographically. Linden layouts in a minute. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's no particular order when we say layout one, two, and three. You're free to go to any or all of the layouts. Yeah. And it probably doesn't hurt if some of you mix up the order between one, two, and three, or you're just going to have a lot, a lot of people going to one layout at the same time. Kevin's, Kevin's uh, layout area is fairly small. So it will probably support four or five people at a glimpse and be comfortable if you get more than that in there. That one will definitely get a little uh, a little crowded. And if anybody has not signed in yet, yes, please do so. Even if you have these signed in, um, again, we need the attendance. 
for MRA and for MRA and for and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we guys are always like we said are always welcome here, but basically, we're basically limited to three visits to the an NMRA event before they really want you to sign up for the NMRA. And that's again, and that's again to cover their liability insurance okay. more than anything. So, with that said, in honor of Halloween, we've gone to the, the candy corn color scheme here for the Providence and Windsor. And this is a shot in Middlefield, I'm pretty sure. And I believe this is over Room 147. Correct. Just drop it. Yep. Uh, so, typical. Uh, Typical local freight. We'll get into the history of it here. That's what I chose to do with this little uh, display layout here. So, so layout detectives. Uh, I wanted to create a portable sectional layout for public display. Um, I really, I really like, like the, the look of like a chatbot style layout. We don't do too many here in the United States. It's more popular in Europe. Um, a lot of you to know, hide your lighting up. You know, background. You have nice. You know, backdrops. And, uh, I just, I think it looks nice as a forward facing to the public at a display. And doing uh, that, doing that was going to require some new uh, construction. So I thought through that. Uh, three sections all together. So this is the first section that I've got assembled at this stage right now. Uh, they're basically 24 by 24 by 48 inch long sections. The uh, area, area package, package is about 22 inches deep. So, fair amount of even even you can get a reasonable sighting or two into the forest, which I felt that was a good depth. It still has some decent sizing in there. So, uh, uh, um, I thought that was a good depth. It still has some decently sized structures in there. Um, I'm going to go with the foam. Uh, I plan to use foam a lot. Another thing with this is this is going to basically be a test bed for my home layout that I'll be starting. Um, this year, I had hoped to break around in my home layout this year, but um, I had two of my children decide to get married this year. So all my time and my money went to two weddings this year. So this was a, a way to at least uh, get some practice in. Uh, I did a couple of projects for the uh, American Historical Society, too. So I was able to try out some new scenery techniques and get some practice in with uh, static grass. So this is all going to be test bed and practicing for my home layout. Um, I decided not to go with legs. Um, you know, watching the modular groups set up, a lot of times legs are a pain in the butt. Um, they get lost, they get broken. Um, it's just a pain putting them up. Um, so I just went out and told them so they would sit on a standard um, train show table, vendor table. Uh, nice thing there, it's more kid friendly, it's a little lower. You know, adults may not like it as much, but um, I felt, you know, we're really trying to do this stuff for the kids and get the next generation into the hobby. So I thought that was a nice way to go. Um, I didn't think about how this could get incorporated into a home layout as well, so um, I'll touch on that. All right. All right. History. Welcome to the New York Airline Railroad, commonly known as the airline. There are several airlines in the country. All airlines really means is the most direct route possible between two destinations with minimal amount of curvature. Um, so again, you can see it started as New Haven, Middletown, and Willimantic Railroad in 1875. And they got grandiose uh, ideas that they would basically went New York and uh, Boston. And yes, they didn't have a lot of success. Um, the some of the unique things about the early trains, they were primarily a passenger railroad. They did run freight too. Um, but their passenger cars were white, so it became known as the ghost train. And in the age of steam, I can't imagine how easy it was to keep the cars white. So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of overhead there. Um, became the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad in 1882. Uh, the tracks between Portland and uh, Willimantic were abandoned in 1965. Uh, and that later became what is today the airline uh, rail trail route, 
which exactly. actually goes all the way out to the uh, Rhode Island border, and I'm not sure how much of it in Rhode Island. Anybody like that in lately? I know Rhode Island's been trying to get their trackage out. It's only a uh, center trail and it won't be paved. Uh, the local residents out there are allowed to ride horses on that trail, yeah, the horse trail, so I, you won't see it be paved. So it's not good for road bikes, um, but if you have a mountain bike or a hybrid bike, it's great for that. Um, you get up there by Willimantic, if you ever go up, their historical society once a year, um, or every few years, they do a walking tour on the old roadbed. And that section of the railroad up there, the section of the railroad up there is known for having the only four distinct train collision in, in railroad history. There were four separate trains uh, all wrecked in the same event. Not at the same time, but you had uh, two trains collide at the start, and then uh, two uh, subsequent trains hit the wreckage and derailed and did a lot of the subsequent to that before work got out that the line was in trouble. Um, so that's a unique one, and it's a good walking tour to go through that. Um, Providence and Worcester took over operations. They run it as the branch. Um, it runs out of uh, the Cedar Hill Yard down in uh, the Monterey section of North Haven. Uh, goes up through North Haven, Wallingford, Durham, Middlefield, into Middletown. Middletown, it jumps on the Delhi Line trackage and goes all the way up to Hartford now. Uh, the section of the north end here was uh, reactivated maybe 15 years ago now, I think. Uh, DOT, can I get DOT to put some money into that? Um, I think the thoughts, they had two thoughts. One was right when um, they were getting ready to double track New Haven to Springfield again, and they wanted to get freight traffic as much of it off the single track while they were going through construction there. And uh, so they wanted to use that as an alternate route to get freight up to these harbor and get it off that line. Um, and also, I suspect that in the long range plans, I haven't read the, the DOT documents lately, but I'm sure in the long range planning, um, Connecticut DOT plans to probably reactivate um, passenger service on the family line from probably Essex up to Hartford, and um, they're probably going to. That's how the Valley Railroad is probably going to get that um, road bridge that was filled in legally, uh, open back up because they'll get the DOT to help. DOT to help situation, solve that situation. Valley and so Valley Railroad will still, still have their track in place, but um, they'll be able to run commuter service. And, uh, and um, it should, should be a win for everybody if that goes through. Um, there were a variety of shippers throughout the province of Worcester time on the railroad. Um, the biggest customer there is the Philcom Quarry on the Wallingford Durham line. line. Uh, they, uh, they, they kind of have a stone season. They can, they can go as many as five times a week. Um, it's an outbound, it's a turn, goes out, comes back. Uh, Philcom ships out 30, 30, 40 car trains of stone almost daily in the summertime. Um, they have their own cars. Um, there are a lot of second-hand uh, ordinary cars, and uh, they have some old uh, CDN 11 panel, three bay half or 70 tonners, uh, and I think there's a few other oddballs in there too. Um, you'll also see uh, GATX hoppers up there getting loaded up for customers, and uh, you'll also see maintenance away cars for either Long Island Railroad, Amtrak, whoever needs ballast is sending their private, you know, their own fleets up there. So that quarry is going nonstop. Um, other customers along the line, and part of them I'm going to incorporate into these little modules here. Uh, East Wallingford has a transload facility. It's on uh, East Center Street. It's on East Center Street. And, uh, and it holds about five or six, five or six two bay hoppers. So they're carrying, so they're carrying some kind of hard commodity there. I have not tried to investigate it. Uh, what they're hauling. It's either uh, cement, Portland cement for um, the uh, precast concrete companies that's in Wallingford, or and they could also be doing road salt out of New Haven Harbor. Um, it's a very simple industry. They literally have no building on site. It's a gravel driveway. 
and they have a uh, wheel mounted uh, loader that they just put the uh, scoop under the uh, the car, open the bay up, and just conveyor it up and hit the dump trucks and off it goes or whatever they're putting it into. Um, so very minimal, easy to model um, facility there. Uh, back in the 90s, I don't remember when they shut down all together. Dino Nobel had a translocal Dino Nobel had a translocal They were facing in cylindrical hoppers. And the load was a slightly ammonium nitrate fertilizer. And if you don't link the name Dino Nobel and ammonium nitrate, Dino and Dynamite filtered the Nobel. Nitroglycerin. Um, and most likely, the customer there was no time for it. They were just that over, putting ammonium nitrate in the boreholes and then adding fuel oil like you have in and it's the perfect blasting agent for first up. Um, there's a Monster Metals in Middletown. Uh, that's located on the old Berlin branch. Um, there's a little three track. Uh, area after you leave the Valley Line and the Berlin Ranch, where uh, it's a double ended siding, so they can do runarounds there because uh, Mokner is the end of the line, and so basically they got to shut the cars in. It's a, it's a huge building, they do uh, sheet steel goods, so you get a lot of flat cars going up there with sheet steel on them, or coil cars going up to be delivered there, and they just get shut up. A um, couple of other ones that um, Although, last time I looked at Google Earth, I see rail cars in Portland. So I don't know if the DOT has actually fixed the bridge between Middletown and Portland now. Um, last time I heard, they had very, very, very problems on the thick bridge. And they would only operate in dire emergencies. So I can't imagine they would let rail cars stranded out there. So I'm guessing they must have done something that they can use it again, but I can't confirm that. Uh, there was a train load for garbage trains over there, was one of the big customers. And there was a paper box company, I believe, and I don't remember what the third was. Um, but that's where the line ends. Uh, basically, if you go out um, Route 17 there, start heading out towards the end at time 66. Um, Basically, the tracks end at the old um, Portland uh, house now. Uh, south of Middletown, the original uh, Middletown sewer plant used to take uh, 10 cars of liquid chlorine for processing the sewage. Uh, when they built a new facility up on the uh, Middletown Cromwell border, they did all put a rail site in there. But I think at yeah, current times, they're taking out the truck delivery. They're not taking out the truck delivery. They're just taking my rail. Um, and then um, after that, and then after I mean, that uh, you have 70 wholesale lumber up in Cromwell, and um, they take uh, two or three center beams of lumber on their siding at a clip. And uh, occasionally, if freight does get rerouted off of uh, the New Haven Springfield line, it will move up the airline that way, and they'll transfer it off to the uh, is that Central Connecticut, I think, that has their facility in Hartford or something Connecticut. Connecticut Southern. Thank you. Yeah. So they, uh, Providence and Worcester and uh, Connecticut Southern uh, work kind of hand in hand there. I've seen both engines on some of the, the freights in there over the years. Um, they're both Tennessee and Wyoming. Yeah, they're both Tennessee and Wyoming. And that's why I won't model that. Because if, if you talk to any of the guys, the uh, Genesee and Wyoming has not been good to the Providence and Worcester. All right. All right, so the three, three sections like this, so it'll be a full foot long with which I'm model. Uh, and I'm going to pick up just north of the Tilcon Quarry. Uh, Durham has one customer there. It's a furniture facility, and I'll show you some more pictures of that. Um, it has actually four, four tracks into the furniture facility. The longest time, I only thought they had two tracks, and the satellite photos show that they've got four now. So they have two that go into their raw lumber yard area, and I'm not sure if they're using those for loading cars or if they're bringing in free like like free they, they do sawing on the facilities there, and they, and they, and they, and they take log cars, cars by truck. So, so um, not sure what those are used for at the current time. 
Uh, there's a track that comes down along the small mill and toward where the uh, retreat port is, where they uh, pressure treat the uh, timbers, pressure treat the timbers. And that's always been the loading track. That's usually where you'll see especially uh, ties getting loading in, into gondolas. And then they have uh, what I call uh, the storage track, which actually winds through the airline business park. It'll hold about 25 uh, gondolas at a clip. So the they, they do not have any facilities that have a train to, to move cars, so P&W has to do their switching for us. So my assumption is that what they'll do is one of the railroads, uh, say Metro North, wants all of the ties, they'll send up 20 cars, whatever they think of ours, whatever they think they need you know, to handle the, the, the tire order. They'll put them on the storage tracks, and every time the local goes if they have, if they have the cars loaded, they'll pull them off the load track. They'll shovel them down, shovel them down onto the storage the track. They'll take two more empties off the storage track. track. They'll shovel them into the loading track. track. So they can keep loading. And, and again, I'll probably use the other ones as the amounts for uh, already cut timbers that are coming in to be traded. Um, so they do primarily ties for the railroad and timbers for the railroad still. Um, there are some pressure treated that's going out to other customers. Um, but I haven't seen details on that. So it was a nice, like one, one facility we've got more tracks, tracks there, there's been a little busy with switching for a while. So that was, was a good one to add to the mix here. Here's, Here's the modules as the layout. Middle, middle field is the other two sections. So, so you can see on the right the half there, um, there are manufacturing. So with three tracks right now, um, and it will we'll probably add part of a four track. It won't be very useful. Um, when, when it's set, set up this way, way. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about, about that in another second. second. And then I've got middle field there, there. so uh, you'll see the salt transload. I'm basically transplanting that piece of in the middle field to give it another switching opportunity. There's the dyno Nobel track, which is prototypical, and then at the other end of the runaround track there, I'm going to put a fictional ship in. So I've got four industries here that I can serve. And I you know that should keep it running. Fairly busy. One of the other things I will probably one of the other things I will probably do is I'll probably do like the British and I'll probably have one or possibly two uh, cassettes that won't be scenic that will just snap onto the ends of the invisible portion. So I've got staging and probably and probably I think it'll be one. So like I'll just snap it. Walk, walk around, around plug it out of the other end. Once the trains come on scene, and that gives me some way to go off scene at the other end. And then I can resort and I can simulate the road coming back. I thought, I thought about, again, I call this sectionals as opposed to modular. Modular, we're building to a standard where the tracks, tracks are a fixed distance from the front of the edge of the layout so that they'll all interlock no matter who's building them. In sectional, you're allowed, allowed to vary the trackage because, again, you're planning to keep the staff together in a specific order. So, so I said, well, you know, if you had a 12 by 12 room, you could take those three modules and put them in for a couple of modules in here. And you could have yourself a nice layout here, switch and layout in your home. Uh, again, I added four only words, so I've got the side lines and all in, and I've got the switch that I don't know into the front line break, and you probably see the little. Little sort of here. Tilcon does, here. Tilcon does have, um, actually have a couple of locomotives. They generally do not do that. Like he's in their plant. He does, the does all their switching. They have, uh, they have a 70 tonner, 44, tonner, 44 tonners up there. Um, when, they when they used to use the, uh, the, the loading bins, bins uh, they, they would basically put the cars on the loader and, and pull, pull them through and blow them. And, and so they, they were doing that internally. Um, they've, they've stopped, stopped doing, doing that at this point, point uh, from what I've seen, and they just have massive front end loaders now. And two scoops with a front end loader fills a uh, 70 you know, ton Ortner car. So they just run down the line of the track and they just load the cars. Because if you've ever driven by, they've got enormous, you know, 100 foot high, uh, 100 foot high piles of crushed stone in the various sizes stored on the property. So they just run from the pile to the track, which is about 50 feet for the closest cars. And they just load that way. So they just load up. All PW does is come in, pull out the string of loads, put them on the, the siding there, and then uh, take the 
empty cars off the main and shove them back in to be loaded again. So it's a, it's a really simple operation, but again, it gives you another switch, switching opportunity that's just to get more of the cars on. If you have more, you could certainly add a staging at both ends. Um, we should kind of run around at the middle field so you can reverse your train and, and head back in this current stand. Uh, so again, if you were in the basement and you had some more room, uh, you could add some more in here. You know, you could add another module and get uh, 70 wholesale lumber up the line a little bit, give yourself another switching opportunity. So there's a lot you could do with it. And again, the thought here was I could just pull out those three modules and the train shows, do the rest of it in the house. All right, benchwork design, shuttle box. All right, well, I really like, if you ever watched the modular already press and you watched the bridge, they go on the shuttle box style uh, modular layouts. They have super detailed over there. They don't have a lot of room. They can't have huge layouts like we do. So they just go to the nth degree with their detailing and their realism. Their scenery is beautiful. And I just like the, the appearance that the shadow box style gives. Anybody with a home layout, if you put balances in, they hide your lighting and everything. It just makes it look so much nicer when you just, all your focus goes into the layout itself and, that, um, and everything else around it. So that kind of drove me. Um, it'll be easier to keep the dust free. I'll probably come up with a way that I can wrap the openings uh, on the modules for transport and for shipping uh, that I'm going to keep on. I'll keep the dust on the layouts. Uh, someone else did a nice um, video on YouTube, and I have to go back and try to find it. What they actually got is they took about 120 holes on one of the square one fans, and they cut a hole in the top of the muscle up here, and they built a uh, open model, a uh, they have video. Might be something I might try down the road. We'll see how that goes. Again, um, legs, you know, they get, like I already said, they get broken, they get lost. They're a pain in the butt to set up, especially if you're by yourself. Um, so I decided I would build a tabletop module. Um, one of the things I'm going to try with this, uh, I've seen a few people that can't say that this is something new, is I'm going to use neodymium magnets in the hole that I have more in the size of the one plus section here. Um, I will probably have two magnets, and the other side will have uh, two sealed pins in the holes, and it will be soft aligning, and it was soft aligning. Together and the magnets all together. The new magazines are my new magazines are my new So two minus twenty, so two minus twenty, more than adequate. One than adequate. Layout section, layout section together. When you're operating, when you're operating. So that's that's why I tried. Magnets, magnets were twenty minutes. So very reasonable cost there. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Yeah, so so very reasonable cost there. And as I just held up the the CNC mill framework. So I'm going to talk about that now, pass this one around. Uh, this is Baltic Birch plywood. So again, it's cabinet grade plywood. You'll see that it's uh, seven ply on here. Uh, seven on here. And so it's a lot better than the 70 ply detail, which is a lot of detail in here. We can put that as a reason for that. I'm really worried about the rest of the corner. So I want to move on. I want to move on. I want to move on. Keep it in between the two on the front point structure. I right, basically can these up. Um, I right, basically can these up. Uh, that's awkward. I don't even really see that. It's just like a problem. Yeah. So this is yeah. a yeah. problem. Yeah. 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 If you have a program like that, you might want to make that. Exactly. Uh, you can do the same thing with software like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
wall covering. And then you know, the other one, I don't know, the other one switch to on one side side. Um, um, but it's like a ring and then it's like a mud and mud or something like that. That's the utility bay. So that's what I've done. Already, already, we'll get it. If I was doing it more, 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 if but I mean, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm pretty happy with the way the construction is gone. And last part of the wall with that, it's really tightens the wall up to feel down the back side here. You'll see I put two four inch shirts with big black top and bottom. Again, by gluing the same way on two blades like that, just locks everything together. It doesn't allow to move around. It's the same concept. That uh, the use modern aircraft manufacturer with derivatives getting on the aircraft is once you start putting all those rivets is once you start putting all those rivets in everything dimension everything comes together monocoque construction it's a really good way to go. Uh, the one thing I would highly recommend number three I have a lot of the batteries the batteries are replace the replacer probably not. Yeah, they're probably not yeah, as good a quality as, as say, a Milwaukee or a Walt or something like that. I can buy well, two of them. I can buy you know, two of them, you know, four amp hour batteries for like ninety nine bucks. bucks on they do their uh, Christmas sales. Christmas sales, the black, you know, black the uh, black sales, Christmas sales, and, Christmas uh, time, and uh, now like one hundred and eighty nine dollars for one battery on you know, the wall side of the wall. To me, that's so, that. To me, that's that's why I that brand. That was the brand. That was the brand. That was the brand. It took me to assemble, to assemble this entire thing. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. It was all the parts cut. All the parts cut. Literally applied glue. Put it down. 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 Remove the ties 
uh, from the track uh, five ties and I'll put in pieces of ties and solder all five rails on both sides of the joint um, so that the rail stays engaged there. And then I'll do the, I'll lay that section of the track uh, with the two modules joined together and then I'll use um, probably a rotor there or some uh, probably a rotor or uh, one of those uh, uh, inverse side at the train car side that flex on their side that flex for that. And then all, all the the all the bus work is the power to both on the whole side is already on two points of the electric car. I just wanted to say engage engage. So even I'll see how that stands the test. Next up next up from this stage um the complete assembly third module so the panel the boring flame the white the white go go um I plan that uh, uh, probably won't be a lot of um, uh, 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 panels, mostly a train section of the same state. So, so probably a couple of things to take some three lines, three lines back, 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 back up and have some three of the back, 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 back up to blend it in. That is just a bad thing to do with the foam on. The plan would be to fall away with the floor of back up. So there's no harm line when you see it just meets the uh, back of it. It gives you a better illusion than going right up against the backdrop. Uh, paint all this, you know, paint all the surfaces of a masonite. Masonite doesn't like to get wet repeatedly, so I'm going to sand all the joints, um, clean them up, and it's going to get painted on all sides of there. It's probably going to get the uh, UPS PNW Brown color, so it stays uh, pretty subdued. I'll add the uh, the magnets and the washers for locking the sections together. Um, I'm going to add the LED lighting. I'm going to add one of the panel lights with the board. That, that, if you don't know what that model is doing, it's completely reverse. Don't top the bottom to it. So, um, you know, you can't get this to the same thing. So, <laughs> I won't say idiot proof, but you know, sometimes I get ahead of myself to get something to get so I don't start using that to look for different tracks. Again, you'll know that I think I'm not going to be 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 well, I got I got that much balance the high range. So I'm going to build off of those pieces of what I'm done. It's really good. And let's see. What's on the list here? Oh, the only thing I have to hold is I'm going to pour. I don't think we'll put those little beams for back. I have a design on the foot. I'm going to hang on top for now. Um, we'll, we'll see how the modules sit together. On a repeated basis, I put out another uh, magnet up there. Uh, but again, I can run this cable and wire through it. Leave it back inside up underneath. Back inside up underneath. I'll make my connections. I'll probably use another whole pile of between the bottom. For the leg bus, for the leg bus. I thought of it. I followed up. Maybe they helped me. So I thought about wire shape ahead of time. That was another reason why I left the bottom of 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 the bottom the back of it is looking at the full price of the modules that they all do when you just get out. Talking about the PCB tie between the sections, wire test the track. Uh, I'm going to go with Pico Code 3 and Pico Turnouts. I like the snap action on their turnouts since it's a switching module. It'll either be gravel or it's going to be gravel or you're just going to flick them with your finger. To change yeah, sides, uh, I am going to put uh, uh, try juicers in. I bought Pico no longer makes the insulfra insulfra and the um I forget what the, the other one was now the, the powered the electrofra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, no, they don't make they make uh, so you can use it either way. You can either have unpowered drives or powered drives. So I'll probably put a fry juicer in. Most of the modern locomotives now, if you put the, you know, if you're doing PCC and you got capacitors on board your locomotives, you could go with, you know, insulated frogs, no problem. It'll tear it down without any problem. I'll probably just put the frog reducer in so I can try it. Um, again, mostly for my own, for the future, for my home layout. Um, since I model the HLM3, I get a lot less uh, contact with the rails, with those little models. So for reliability, I think I want to have power.
I want to have powered frogs. Some of those models, I don't think I can get caps, at least a decent amount of caps to fill them, so uh, I'll go that way. Uh, let's see what else. Another American track, that's obvious. Got the DCC, yep. And uh, I already talked about building all the seat uh, track to set. I may, I may do it with a spade in there, and there so I, 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 do like I do like three tracks in, uh, in the cassette. You could, you could basically pull in, use the, use the sector plate to slide, slide the locomotive over to another track, track and then uh, and, uh, couple, couple on to a different train, to a different train and, uh, you know, and uh, you know, simulate coming back with a different uh, different load. And, uh, and uh, on to building the scenery, and I show you again with shadow box, is everything can is everything stay, stay bound. Really I take the building all the time. Yeah, you get wear, wear, and wear, and wear and tear from just handling yeah. stuff all the time. So to be able to, to, be able to have stuff set in permanently should be nice. So here's, so the, here's the prototypes here. Here's the different types of you play. Am I going? That there, sir. Looks like they may have seen the beams on the photo. I found out. The second track is in here. This is the second track in the down. This is the final area. This is the report where they write the printing. You can see the picture. It's a long way to come up with that. They do a lot of the laws of all knowing. So I wasn't, wasn't quite, quite sure that they were really used to the side as well, but it's there, there. And, and then, then well, it's hard to get it here. It comes down, and yeah, this, this is, is the airline industrial park up here. This is uh, 68, you can go in Durham, and Durham, and this is 157. It eventually goes over to Lagos. The uh, uh, storage is going to the woods down to the woods here into the industrial park. The curves, uh, curves around. Uh, originally, it was a little bit of a different set up. You know, the road is over here, over here, which is not just now a Hobson Monster, but they've never had rail service. So, they've never had rail service. Why, yeah, otherwise, I don't know why you've got this big long thing exciting to get out of this industrial park. Uh, um, this is a little bridge. This is a little bridge. It's right, right here, right here. On the line, the line that will be the opening scene. The is a little bit wide. Uh, 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 very very rich bridge across one side of that and there, very narrow. So that's where we'll start. You can see the big high bells. And uh, one thing you can see up at the top of the photo, there's a notice on the photo. There's a notice on uh, this side of the picture. Uh, uh, you see a pipe uh, going across the there. Across uh, the uh, bridge there. The other um, reason why this the is, other reason why this thing is still called the airline to this day is because line, that's a pipeline that runs from New Haven Harbor up to Winter Locks to Bradley Field at the National Guard Base and pump jet fuel. From New Haven to Winter Lodge. Actually, I can pump it in from the bottom. I don't really get a jet fuel. That's how it's a lot of water. 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 This is, is looking northbound. You can see the two tracks here. This is which I just like the whole house. house. Now the shot 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 crosses over. It's over. Very back, very back here. I know, I know. No bell transload facility. That was used there. Use there. This, this area, area is right in the grass. It's looking at a big small shot. Salt, salt, train, transload, cement, train, transload. Which would still work out because I can justify it. From this location as opposed to the one for location, mileage wise, it's the same mileage to the, the pre cast cement. Thing. So if they're doing Portland cement, it still works. So I'm just going to move it up here. Nice thing, too, is you can have the old. Uh, I don't know if this was originally the train station or not, the below that here. Um, but the gentleman has the F1 box car and has his old earring caboose, so I could build those put them on the bed section of rail just to be got it there. So it gives it a little. A little context in the scene makes it pretty, and then I would put my additional shield around the middle of that over here. 
So well, that's the game plan for that. Couple other last quick shots of uh, BMW in the actual. This sighting here. I'm trying to tell. I don't I think, think that's that middle field. That, that may be. be Maybe over at the the Telcom plant there, and then the lower picture is uh, the Stephanie Hotelers. You can see it's a curved track, it's kind of green and flat, you know, kind of green for the forklifts and everything. And they just take longer, and that's kind of green. You can see the little hole. The prototype is that's the length of the siding right there, so they just hold two or three set of beams and a clip, and they're so definitely modeled, model worthy. Um, that's all I got. I'm not sure. 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 I'm not yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can stand off to the side. You got the slide. If I have the slide on there, I can save my slide. And, and I can kind of see down. All I got to do is step in and throw the switch. So, so, yeah, yeah, it has its pros and cons. Do you have a question? No. no. Yeah. Hardy said you're going to hold the modules against the magnets? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, Where is that? There is um, probably these two holes here. On one side of the module, they will get the engineer magnets, and then the main bolt on the other side will get um, probably a couple of fender washers, a couple of fender washers, a fender washers, a little block on the block inside. This side this are designed like uh, fringe magnets, uh, fringe magnets. Uh, so they have a bolt, so they have a bolt and room magnets. Under the bolt, 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 under and then on the other side, I want to just talk about how they receive an inch. So the, the line will act as receivers going into the hole in the other model. So it will solve the line, and the magnets will just hold it together. And they, uh, when I hit the top, I may um, add another magnet on top, maybe another magnet on top, maybe just to find which one could crack just so I can control the magnets going on to the balance. It's pretty long, but. So that's the game plan. So that's the game plan on this. I'll look forward on that on a future date. Yeah, I wanted to point out, you, you point out already from all the development, super magnets come in a washer style. So instead of trying to solution them, they're my classic things are in a washer style. Buy the ones that are yeah, 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 like washer and spool them, and they stay in place. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, 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 they're, they're uh, circular, you know, donut shaped. Uh, I think they take a number four screw and they're counter sunk for a flathead screw with a screw will set flat. And uh, that's the game. Yes? Where are you getting the phone and the mace knife? What size do you buy? Uh, phone. Big phone. Oh. Big box reseller, big box reseller. So in the installation section, they sell it in two inch thick, in two inch thick, inch thick, one inch thick, one inch thick, possibly two inch thick, four by eight, four by eight. Um, um, two inch thick, two inch thick, by eight is the bow. Um, the bow is about thirty dollars, I think. Thirty dollars, thirty dollars, thirty dollars. It's a little pricey for a little bit of polymer, a lot of hair, and uh. What about the Hazen Knight? The Hazen Knight, I believe, I couldn't find it at the orange big box, but the blue big box is the Hazen Knight. It's stuck. And that four way sheets, and of it's like 15, 18 bucks a sheet. So really, not that, that sort of three months, but I can like the sheet half the Hazen Knight. Uh, I'll be just over uh, a sheet. Four bay sheet for the three modules. Four bay sheet for three modules of the two inch long. Mm -hmm. Since I'm going to do uh, so the second layer doesn't uh, have to be full. Yeah. 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 And a lot of the time, uh, and a lot of the settings uh, go downhill. Go downhill. 
Are you having that? Uh, I have a couple of that I was able to cancel. That I was able to cancel. That's what it is. But what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is they increase more of each sheet. And if you could snap it, you could snap it. 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 You could snap Go in the parking lot. Y'all are just working in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> if they do, don't listen. If they do, don't listen to us. <laughs> You're a customer. Paying customers. They, 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 they carry two by four. What do they do? One in the house. One in my four. Two by four. That's one for the top. It's like a rack where you just get article parcels. Yeah, that's one of the nice things with the big box box sellers. It's like highlight good. You can put them by four, four by four sheets, so you don't have to carry full sheets. So yeah, if you can find a masonite already pretty close to two by fours. Take a whole heck of a lot more. Double check the dimensions because that's two by four. Now, which is another reason why I want the whole sheet. Yeah, two two foot wide. I know it would get a bit on top of the module and across the back. From, from view better that way. Um, any other questions? All right. I'll report back when we uh, get further along. And, uh, and uh, we'll get Steve to come up. You have your thumb drive, right, Steve? Okay. We'll okay. Pop, pop that quick and, quick and then. And then uh, We'll take a little break after you go, and I'll get to the inside of the office. You've got a pump time, too, so that doesn't take too long, either. And, uh, yeah, we'll take a little little break in about five or six minutes, seven minutes. All we're going to take to do is get on there, and we should pretty much be on track for the uh, to, to, to be done. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'll just take it right here. We don't have two plugs. You can have a download that. I need to I need to do some quicker. Well that that's gotta go in a minute. So you probably get about uh, just one one port. Um I can take another, or there's another one over here. That's just my wireless keyboard. And that one's got to go in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just No, 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 I haven't heard the horns go off three times at all, and <laughs> everything shakes. <laughs> um, yeah. Not going away anytime soon. I, I used to know the plant manager up there, and I talked to him probably about eight years ago or so, and he said they still have 80 years worth of stone before they're figured out. And uh, I think when they're done, man, there's this uh, remediation is going to be turned into a reservoir. And turn it over to the towns as a reservoir or a park or something. Otherwise, it's a giant, giant hole in the ground. Not much call for that. They'd have to fill it back in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people get mad when they get stopped by the stone train. Yeah, it's been a while. 
So that I don't get a chance to get pictures. You should be all set. For some reason, it burns the blab in the front of the previous slide. Probably because I'm using the. without it. Uh, 
on the you can see right there is the fifty dollars, but it was a fundraising without uh, that goes. So uh, it was a pretty neat. So here I really want to go back into uh, some of the tank car books I have and I found they actually they were advertising and uh, had a closer look at it and uh, this is this is really pretty cool. It's uh, a tank, tank line. If you know how tank cars work, work. Um, <laughs> manufacturers will fire as well. Builders and builders. Number of tank cars. Tank cars. In this case, in this case uh, 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 GLS is the GLS. It's a bit much smaller. They buy and own the tank cars, but then they lease them to uh, whoever wants to uh, lease for a certain amount of time tank cars from them for specific purposes. In this case, the car was leased to Publisher Ford Distilling Company of Philadelphia. And what's interesting is it says right on there, if you can, if you can see it, um, Cologne, it, it, it supports it says manufacturers of Cologne spirits and alcohol. <laughs> and um, so normally when we see tank cars, when we see it's labeled for something, we figure, well, it's kind of carrying that stuff. Well, we're going to find out that that's not exactly the case here for, um, for reasons that I won't divulge. But it was still a neat type of car. Uh, a neat type of car. Well, like I said, I want to like to put it in 15. I can put it in the photo. photo. Um, uh, this is a photo. So they, uh, they mentioned that they were a distiller, and I said, I'm, I'm not real sure what, uh, what, what a distillery does. They're really quite, quite simple. Uh, in the case here, this is the example for making cologne. And you, you take um, aromatic, um, I'm sorry. Okay. That's right. You can take uh, flowers, uh, plants, moss, roots, whatever. You put them in a, in a vessel. You boil the muscle. You come up, comes out. The steam comes out. It gets out, condensed. Gets condensed and the, uh, so the, uh, the central part of here, here is you get, you get uh, on top. The top is uh, the central oil. And that's where the uh, column is made. And then you get the sprinkling water comes off the bottom. Now, you use the same process to uh, distill alcohol. In this case, you make ethyl alcohol. Also known as ethanol, the same exact process you could use for. And uh, what you do over here, you can just barely see the, uh, the formula. Okay. If you want to make a cologne, you use about 15% of um, uh, essential oil along with alcohol. Essential oil along with alcohol. And if you want to make water, and if you want to make perfume, you go basically the same, except you have the higher percentage of the essential oil. So that's what the so that's what the ward is made from. Ward is making that they're plants. So then the uh, the next so then the, uh, the next question is a what exactly are they carrying in this tank car? And, uh, and uh, they put the three possibilities. They listed three possibilities on the side there. They have alcohol, and I don't know that you could use it. Perhaps not. But, uh, but, uh, alcohol, alcohol is ethanol. I figured, I figured there was a chance that chance that you were carrying, carrying alcohol, alcohol from uh, ethanol in this tank car. And probably, probably uh, some of the other items. If you came down here to Cologne, even though it's advertised, um, it's very unlikely that they're carrying Cologne in a tank car. And in a tank car, and especially since you have 10,000 gallons, you're probably going to have to do that. Well, probably is not in here. And uh, yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, uh, obviously, whiskey. They did make a story. 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 Because um, when it came to me, it didn't have the uh, the proper uh, brake system, and it didn't have the proper trucks on it. So, so even though the, the, uh, the car is uh, in the actual making condition, 
Uh, there were a few anomalies that had to be addressed. So here are the uh, original kits. I should say the original as built uh, model. This is not your past one, but this is not your past one, but the, uh, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can see that uh, from over the promoter, this item put this item together. They probably could have done better than have 19 bar with. Bar with. Um, uh, See, we're right. glad it's short. We're almost, we're almost done. Okay. <laughs> so you can see that it came with uh, Matador trucks. Um, actually, these are appropriate for some hand cars in 1915, believe it or not. But they're not this one. You know, we sell the paper for French bar trucks. And obviously, the uh, AV brake system. Uh, the brake system uh, was not introduced until around 1934. So that had to be removed. The trucks had to be fixed. And uh, there's a look into the this is a minor point. The safety valve on top. Um, um, the the later design was not used in the 1950s. So that's okay. I, I chose to remove that. And then important, also an important documentation. Documentation of the tank car design that was actually in 1929, and now we put it into a 1915 So there's a lot of details that may not be a lot of people, but they weren't quite right. So I went through and I fixed the car up, and basically what I had to do is the brakes. Were replaced. Here I used the T sheet. Here I used the T sheet uh, brake set and uh, put some new ones on with pipes and others. The, uh, the, uh, arch bar, uh, the arch bar trucks came from the bottom of 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 the we put the uh, scale we put the scale wheel and yeah. whenever you have uh, especially a tank car, the wheels are very visible. Yeah. 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 And uh, angles the scale we put the scale wheels on there and they look really nice. The uh, paint and uh, the paint has to be touched up, but in this case I had uh, a jar of uh, uh, fifty years old, old. years old. Still functional. Still functional. It was perfect match. Perfect match. It was good. It was good. And uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I Shocks, and dark and my favorite here, as you can see, this product is called flat, crystal clear, and it is absolutely dead flat. I'm going to make a lot of uh, rat can sprays, which might find, and it's a uh, claim to be flat, this is it's dead flat, and uh, it's good. So, in the end, I was, uh, I was quite happy to have this car. But uh, I was not really pleased with the amount of work that I had to do. Uh, I had to work in it, so it was five or six hours to go on one freight car that contained a uh, box uh, ready to run, as they called it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the fancy sensibly made it uh, work for me. And I was, uh, I was not really unhappy that I had to put the time into it. But the thing is also, in comparison, um, you know, you can you can spend even a lot money than I spent on the, the kids and the mockings and the books. So and if you're real simple like I am, uh, or like I am, uh, you can get a car just like this. Um, and if this is uh, one that is 99.5% uh, accurate in every car, in every car, it's got the brakes, uh, proper brakes, detailed detail, proper trucks, proper detail, proper detail. Um, it's a mere forty-five dollars. Okay, I mean it's still a lot of money, granted, but it was still compared to you know what I did and all the time I put into it. You know, see, these are the alternatives, and uh, you know if you're real careful about those things, uh, it's nice to know that you can get these kind of cars. So this is my uh, this is my uh, my. Uh, 
Hurry, hurry, hurry. 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 And then so in that train, in that train, the moving, moving westward along the Ohio River. Do both the cars get come? Properly weighted and number eight standard or not? That's a good question. I I don't oh, we're not, I, I didn't weigh them. Um, I'm, I'm not a stepper when it comes to the weight, especially with a tank like that. It would be really quite difficult to add weight. That's, That's what I wonder if you had to yeah. with if you have careful tracks for the so so wheels, the so 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 for me, the weight will hard to Okay. Yeah. Um, the details. The details. The details. The details. The details. The the car came ready to run, but it just wasn't ready to run for 1915. You know, if you didn't care about any of that, just put it, put it on the layout, it's fine. But all the details were kind of wrong for 1915. And even if you would have assumed that that car lasted, and it probably did for a while in service, in fact, they said it lasted up until the 1950s. But even if it was in that system that, that, that service in 1950, chances are all of the samples would have been are off. And it wouldn't look like that car. And that's how the truck would have been off. And the truck would have been off. And the truck would have been off. And the truck would have been off. But that same behavior would not have been off. It changed out. So the, the whole thing that I think the council was in trouble with the car was really not going to be going out of the truck. In the end, in the end we got all fixed up. I'm not happy. And we move on. Hey, Jeff. All right. We get PowerPoint from this one. Just for reference, even though I'm just showing it didn't show up here good on the screen. You can always go back to the NMR, uh, the Nutmeg Division YouTube channel because everything is being recorded and I happen to see it on a separate screen over here and you can quite easily see all the um, wording and everything else. Oh, okay. it's just, it's just the, the video card more than anything. Video, whatever it may be, the projector, yep. could be a few things, but you can <laughs> okay. go back okay. anytime and enough. look at it. Okay. Yes. All right, we'll take a few minutes here to get James set up. Do you guys need a natural break or anything? Um, I'd like to do this again. Yeah. I'd so like we would like to take yeah. so sure. if, if you don't mind, we're going to do it again. Right. Uh, so I'm going to try to say that. 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 Okay, good morning, gentlemen. The Cat and Chiefs um, uh, give this presentation did it, um, five years ago.
And so the goal would be for the cars that are getting picked up. The second set of letters is if there are any intermediate stops for this. Um, so this one is Jackson. This is Jackson. Jackson Yard on my railroad. Jackson Yard on my railroad. These are all going to go. These are all going to go to Jackson. And then the third set of letters. Letters, this, is where, this is where they're going to go. So in the, the Jackson Yard we'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. That first one goes on the track. The middle one goes to the X interchange. The middle one goes to the X interchange. The first one. And the third one on the track to goes on the track to the shrimp board. Run off the red road. It's not, okay, not all the pictures. <laughs> Spider spider This is how we make it up. Um, um, I'm not a big fan of the motorcycles. They don't work on my railroad well. Because I don't like having cars being crowded. You know, you have three cars going to the same spot. No. You know, whoever could assign those cars or your, uh, what's it? Car agent. Yes. Is an idiot. If he did that, bang! No, you don't say the three cars in the same spot. So there's only one spotting order for each slot on the railroad. Just one. So any cars that you want to get a move, you take this out and put a routing card in it. But spotting orders will have your destination, county, state, destination, industry, usually. Um, they will all have a destination track number, destination track, and if there's spots, so if there will be spots on that track, it'll tell you which one to go to. Uh, and it could be more in the order that they're going to keep unloaded. Say, and um, say your uh, unloading frame or sort of grain or cement or sack, stone, or something like that, is what order they're going to be unloaded in. And underneath, and underneath that line, it's to help me. To help me, I'm going to go to set up for the op session. What 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 cars, what cars will go to, go to that spot? Because putting, putting a paint car, car on the track there, you're going to unload up uh, gravel. Not a good move. So that just that will just help me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's okay. Yes. There's an exception. There's always exceptions. What is the uh, modules? When you're attached by railroad. When you're attached by railroad, it's, when you're it's, by railroad, it's a big paper pulp bin. Cars will be sent. Cars will be sent to like the paper mill. Like the paper mill. Now, clean orders. That's the only thing you can ship. That's the only thing you can ship. Well, good paper. So right? if you have a police drive so if you have a police drive body, those cars are going to be sent in there because they are eventually going to need them. So that's what I do. So that's what I do. We're doing this. this. And I just have, I just have uh, body spotting cars, spotting cars with just with just middle phone on it and the numbers so I can remove them. And also, and also how, I, how I want to run my session. I I it, 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 it is to start out as so, so if, if if Middletown has to be switched at the beginning of the session, where that's it, I'll use these cars in the train in the train that's going to feed Middletown. They'll get dropped up. They'll get assigned later because all the all the regular cars with the spotting orders are going to be they're going to be worked. They're going to be worked. So confusing as mud, right? So there we go. So Jackson Yard Master, hard at work. Also another the other there's the other former superintendent. Working in the yard. Working in the yard. And then oh, in this picture, decided to leave. And also the this was a picture of the um, inner working edition of so. <sighs> Questions? <laughs> and the <laughs> picture of the boost. Well, you weren't kidding when they said that. Uh, 
Okay, no, no PowerPoint on this. What are you running for program anyway? Sorry. Oh, All right. I didn't want to pay these stories to Microsoft. No, I didn't like Yeah, I didn't like that would be great. Thank you. That would so, be great. So, um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, additional information. Yeah. I got uh, a wave from him. A bunch of other papers all lined up because they were all in his pockets. So here, <laughs> this is what we do. You want to do this on your railroad? I'm drawing sorry. Yeah, this is it. No. Proto-throttles are not allowed. <laughs> Proto-throttle killed my railroad. Yes. <laughs> it did. Yeah. You were there. Everything went, everything went nuts. And it was Dale Proto-throttle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> huh? Right, right, car. And then two pieces of paper. Just one. one. Just, that just one. one. Just that fine. Yes, that's it. Because I, I don't want anybody, you know, fumbling with the card. So which one is it? You know, did it did this get turned? This, you know, no. one piece of paper in there. This is all you have to do. Makes it nice and simple. You don't have to. Think about the paperwork, and the way that I can run the railroad is it going to the same? That's okay. We'll fix it after. Easy, easy. He's about at the middle one, then it's the routing part. Okay, the routing part. Is that one there too? Yes, that will go in there. But there's two pieces. No, there's one. There's, there's only one. There's okay. only one card in the, in that envelope at any time. Ah, okay. Just one. So. So if you have a routing card in there, you're moving that car to somewhere else, and that's it. So if you're either coming off the road, coming off the railroad, not a station, and to the main yard, if it has a colored car, you know, if they're colored, and you take to the yard, that's where it goes. That's your immediate side, and it gets put on on different tracks. And then when I go to stage through operations. I'm the one that goes into a sliding door. Right. And if I'm feeling nice and generous, I'll have them all in order. Yeah. Or if I'm not, you know, so like I had this, you know, so like I had, can I run this job? Can I run this job? Sure. I'm going to get nice for you. I'm going to get nice for you. Doing hell. 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 Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not going to be, they're not, they're they're not, not going to be, be fun really in order. Oh. So you said the demand for all what are the officers in the industry? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, then, yeah, uh, then on, that's what's the, on this, uh, where, I show the bottom, where, where I show the bottom of the part. That way I can read what farm people want this. Yeah, I have to play the universal industry. I have to the whole industry. I mean, that was a thing you see that you switched every day or every other day. Or I mean, I mean, that's that up. Thing. That's what? Right. Some of these are Yeah, it, it depends on, you know, one of the factors that I use is how many of these cars do I have in the yard? Okay. If there's only two, car, two cars full of um, stone in the yard, I might only take two. I might take four out. I don't know if it's what, what do I want to try to do. And I'm not working on the uh, state work on the railroad being balanced. You know, cars have to be moved. You can only move four cars at a time, you know, out of this industry because the balance is up. My railroad can be totally out of balance and last a lot. Huh, John? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's interesting. I've done it. We're going to clean the oxygen. Turn it off the layout, unplug it. Bang, we're done. But I'm not finished. But I'm not finished. The next time gets done, 
finish it. So, I mean, it's just like so, the word. I mean, it's just like the word. It's really right. right. so because why a southeastern, why a southeastern, southeast USA, ACG, smaller region. That's the way they were done. We're done. It'll be there. It'll be there. You know, they're going to try and say, oh, God, it'll be there Monday. <laughs> and that's, that's the way they want it. And it's really like that. So. Questions? Questions? Comments? Suggestions? When you're on the lawn, do you continue this out session or start another one or just run things oh. up? And then it's. Um, I do keep the, a list of I do keep the list of all the the, the trade signages. I keep them all. So if you do run do operate on my railroad and you need to collect your time for um, your chief dispatcher, maybe you're gonna get you can see which which uh, trades you ran. We'll get come up with an estimate about how long it, you ran that train and also the negotiation. I'm not on the site. Keep all the there are yeah. trains that get one every day. Yeah. One yeah. session and other ones that just get moved up the list that they haven't even run. And there are some other train trains that run occasionally because it's off it's off the layout, but it also has a cool fire power plant which outside of was it Pasadena, Mississippi? There was a coal-fired circuit power plant, so they only fired, fired it up when they needed it. So it didn't get a train once a week. It might get it might get a, um, a coal train one a month or every two months, depends. But I'll do that. Just hey, now if somebody's going to come over, I'll give them that train here. Here, you need to reverse direction. You have an eight foot train and a six foot slide. Good luck! <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it was back in the. the uh, what was it? Edwards Local. Edwards Local. Yeah, Edwards Local. Well, how hard could it be? It's oh, size cars. What do you mean this is the hardest yeah. job on the railroad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, don't remember. So, like the thing on, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor